Hi, this is Mrs. Richmond, and this is the video for the Photosynthesis Lab. If you were absent the day that we completed this activity, please watch this video so that you can have some help while you complete the lab. Your first job should be to put your name on the paper, and then you should read through the background information on the plant that we're using in the lab and what we'll be doing. This should prepare you to start the lab. You were told that you would need to memorize the equation for photosynthesis. There are three things that go into a plant that photosynthesizes and two that come out. Please write the formula for photosynthesis in the space below. You can write it in words or in chemical form. Please do that now. The problem that we're going to be investigating in this lab is which lighting conditions make plants photosynthesize more. We are going to be studying bright lights, normal room lights, and no light. First, before you start your lab, you need to make a hypothesis. So choose one of the lighting conditions and then explain how you think it will photosynthesize. For example, if a plant is under no light, then it will photosynthesize very quickly and very efficiently. Make up your own hypothesis, please. Do not copy mine. Here you will find a list of materials that we will use for the lab, a test tube, some Elodea sodium bicarbonate or baking soda, a beaker, water, a bright lamp, a stopwatch, and a spatula. Um, you will get a sprig of the plant from me in a test tube. Um, then you will add a little bit of baking soda to the test tube. Fill the test tube with water, mix up with the baking soda, put the test tube in a beaker full of water, and then subject the test tube and beaker apparatus to various lighting conditions. Be sure that you record your data and then repeat steps so that you can test all of the different lighting conditions. We will be using stopwatches in this lab. Um, you turn them on by hitting the blue button. You start and stop them with the yellow button. We will be adding baking soda to our plant in the test tube because baking soda adds carbon dioxide to the water which the plant needs. Here is the setup for the lab. You can see the plant inside a test tube. That test tube is full of water with a little bit of baking soda. And then the test tube is placed inside of a beaker and it holds the test tube so that you don't have to hold it and so that you can view the bubbles that the plant will make. Your first test is to have all of the lights off, and we did this for five minutes. Um, when you are timing, you should be looking for bubbles to be coming out of the stem of your plant. In this case, we found that zero bubbles came out of the plant in, with all of the lights off in the room. Please record this in your data chart. Next, we turned the normal room lights on, and again, we timed this for the same amount of time as the first. And we found that with the normal room lights on, your plant made 10 bubbles of oxygen come out of its stem. Please record this in your data table for normal lights, 10 bubbles. Next, we used extremely bright lights, such as these heat lamps in this student picture, and at, such as this grow lab in this student picture, to try to increase the amount of photosynthesis that the plant underwent. In this case, we were able to count 90 bubbles for the same amount of time as the first two experiments. And we counted 90 bubbles that the plant made. Please record this on your data chart under bright light. All right, now you're going to answer the six conclusion questions and be sure that you answer them in complete sentences. Number one says, what are the bubbles that you are counting? Remember that this is photosynthesis, so think about the gas that a plant produces during photosynthesis. Number two, why did the bubbles happen? Um, again, the plant was photosynthesizing, so why would these bubbles be happening? Number three, did the number of bubbles change when the light intensity changed, and why would that happen? So if you look at your data, you saw it went from 0 to 10 to 90. So yes, the number of bubbles were changing, and why would that happen? What could you tell me about the relationship between the intensity of the light and the amount of photosynthesizing the plant was able to do? Number four, why was the test tube put inside the beaker of water? We talked about in class that the beaker of water protects the test tube from getting hot under the bright light because we only want to test one variable, the amount of light that's reaching the plant, not the temperature of the water that reaches the plant. Um, we need to be sure that we isolate the amount of variables that we have so that we are not testing multiple things during one experiment. Number five, why was sodium bicarbonate or baking soda added to the water? 
we added this to the water because baking soda adds CO2 that the plant needs to photosynthesize. Finally, number six, consider these facts. Elodea is green. This is because it contains chlorophyll. The light that we're using is white and contains all the colors of the rainbow. When each light, color of light reaches an object, the light energy is either absorbed into or reflected back out of an object. And the color of an object is actually the color of light that's being reflected back out. So for example, the plant looks green because it's reflecting green light. All other colors of light, light like red, yellow, orange, blue, indigo, violet, etc., all other colors of light are actually being absorbed. Using these facts to support your answer, predict what colors of light you think are used by a plant in photosynthesis. So please tell me which colors of light you think are used in photosynthesis and then explain to me why you think that. This should complete your photosynthesis lab. Please make sure that your name is on it and turn it in to me as soon as possible. Thanks very much.